Welcome to Magnifica.tv's news, dedicated to providing news from the church. Today is Wednesday, December 7, 2022, and these are our news. The Vatican has announced it, that the pontific will visit South Sudan and Congo in January. This trip has been postponed due to the post knee problems. The Belgian bishops may the mandatory alumina visit to the Vatican and made the same demands as the German bishops. Coinciding with the alumina visit of the Belgian bishops, the statistics of the church in that country, which is on the way to the experience, were presented. According to the latest statistics, the total number of the Christians in England and Wales is now less than half of the population. The Prefect of the Vatican Secretary of State, Joshua Father Guerrero, has resigned for health reasons. He is succeeded for the first time by a late man. The Pope will finally be able to make the postponed trip to Congo and South Sudan. It will be next January, the Vatican has announced. The Holy See has announced the Pope's apostolic visit to the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan. It will take place from the 31st January to February the 5th, 2023. He will be accompanied on his stop in Juba by the Anglican Archbishop of Canterbury and the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. This trip was due to take place last July. The Holy Father's knee problems made it unfeasible to carry it out at the time when Cardinal Parolin, the Vatican Secretary of State, was sent east instead. The departure on 31st January 2023 will be to the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kinshasa, where the Pope on his arrival will see the President of the Republic and then meet with the diplomatic corps. The following day, February the 1st, he will celebrate Holy Mass in the morning at the airport in the city of Ndolo. The following day, February the 2nd, Francis will have three meetings, two public with young people and catechists, and then with priests, deacons, consecrated persons, and seminarians in a prayer meeting. The private meeting will be with members of the Society of Jesus. On February the 3rd, Francis will leave for the South Sudanese capital, Cuba, and will be joined by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, Jim Wallace. In Cuba, after the welcoming ceremony, there will be a courtesy call on the President of the Republic. The following date, the Pope will meet with bishops, priests, and seminarians and we have a meeting with members of the Society of Jesus, another with internally displaced persons, and an ecumenical prayer at the John Garang Mausoleum. The Belgian Church has made the same demands as the German Church during its alumina visit to the Vatican. Right after the German bishops came the alumina visit of Belgian bishops, part of whom the Flemish bishops recently approved a right for the blessing of same-sex couples, contrary to what the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith established in a responsum. Cardinal de Kessel, president of the Belgian bishops, reported on the content of the dialogues held with the various Vatican dicasteries. We talk about homosexual couples. We talk about Biri Provati. We talk about the possibility of the diaconate for women, he said. The Kessel also calls for the ordination of married men and the ordination of diaconesses, claiming that these already existed in antiquity. In reality, what existed for women was an institution of a ministry that allowed them to dedicate themselves to the service of priests. 
The church in Belgium is on the way out of existence. This is confirmed by the statistics released this week. In the midst of the controversy over the blessing of same-sex couples, grim data on the situation of the church in Belgium are released. There were eight priestly ordinations in 2021, while six diocesan priests left the ministry. There was also a significant increase in the number of people requesting that their names be removed from the baptism registers. There were 5,237 such requests in 2021, compared with 1,261 in 2020 and 1,800 in 2019. The report highlights that mass attendance on an average Sunday was 166, 785 in 2021, compared to 241,029 in 2019. Attendance at Midnight Mass and Christmas Day was 347,229 in 2021, a large decrease compared to 551,134 in 2019. There are approximately 6.7 million baptized Catholics in Belgium out of a total population of almost 12 million suggesting that around 2.5% of Catholics attended Sunday Mass in 2021, down from 42.9% in 1967. England is no longer Christian, at least from a statistical point of view, as all churches together no longer account for half of the population. According to the Office for National Statistics, which has published a new set of results from the 2021 census, less than half of the residents of England and Wales consider themselves to be Christian. This is the first time this has happened since the British Isles converted to Christianity. Although answering the religion question was voluntary, 94% of the population in England and Wales, or 56 million, responded up from 92.9% in 2011, the ONS notes. And within the data, it highlights that, for the first time in a census in England and Wales, less than half of those enumerated, 46.2%, or 275 million, describe themselves as Christian, down 13.1 percentage points from 59.3 percent or 33.3 million 10 years earlier. The second most frequent category was no religion, up 12 points to 37.2 percent, and there were increases in the number of people describing themselves as Muslim, up 6.5 percent or 3.9 million and Hindu, 1.7% or 1 million. London remains the most religiously diverse region in England, with over a quarter, 25.3% of residents associating themselves with a religion other than Christianity. In contrast, the northeast and southwest of England are their least religiously diverse areas with 4.2% and 3.2% of non-Christians, respectively. A layman will preside for the first time over the Vatican Secretary of State for the Economy. The previous president, Father Guerrero, has resigned for health reasons. Maximino Caballero is the first layman in history to take charge of the Vatican finances as a current prefect of the Holy See Secretariat for the Economy. Spanish Jesuit priest Juan Antonio Guerrero resigned for personal reasons. The Pope, the Holy See Press Office reported, warmly thanked Father Guerrero for the dedication shown in his service to the Holy See. Father Guerrero managed to put the economy in order. It was a strong and demanding work that bore much fruit. The Holy Father assures him of his prayers. Considering with the announcement, Father Guerrero sent a letter to the employees and collaborators of the Secretariat for the Economy, 
in which he explained the reason for his decision. I underwent surgery this year, and I undergoing medical treatment that is causing me certain side effects, which make it particularly difficult for me to carry out a task as demanding as the one I'm doing, in which require physical efficiency and mental concentration better than I have at the moment. The outgoing perfect at it. We experience that in the reform process, there are steps forward and steps back, but as the years go by, we see real progress. We are not now at the same point where we started. Our editorial this week is dedicated to commenting on the visit of the Belgian bishops to the Vatican and the inclusion of the goal of the 2030 Agenda of the World Youth Day. The Episcopal Conferences have the obligation to visit the Vatican structure, that is to say, the pontifical offices, the different ecclesiastes, and above all, the Pope at least once every five years on a regular basis. The truth is that now with the COVID epidemic, this has been delayed, and there are conferences that have not been to visit for seven or eight years. This visit is called at Limina Visit, a visit to the tombs of St. Peter and St. Paul, that is to say, those foundations of our faith. A few days ago, it was the at Limina Visit of the German bishops, and this week it was the at Limina Visit of the Belgian bishops. The Belgian bishops are in full harmony with the German bishops, with the difference that they do not have so much of their own thinking and that they are a small Episcopal conference from a small country and also in a very deep crisis. They have been visiting the different dicasteries of the Vatican. They have met all the Episcopal conferences do. They have met with the Pope, but there has not been an extraordinary session as there was with the German, with Cardinal Parolin, Laderia and Wallet were present, and therefore there has not been a final statement, but not because they are different from each other, but because the Vatican does not give them so much importance. However, at the end of the ad limina visit, the president of the Belgian bishops, Archbishop of Brussels, Monsignor de Kessel, has made a statement saying that he has found receptivity from the presidents of the different dicasteries, and in some cases, has found rejection to his proposals, but that they will continue to do what they were doing until now, among other things, the blessing of homosexual couples, which they had already started, was already in the news a few months ago. It seems, therefore, that the doctrine is maintained. That is to say, the Vatican is not willing to yield in its essential principles, the same as it was manifested with the Germans. The doctrine is maintained, but it is left to each one to do what they want. This, of course, can be motivated by prudence and by the desire not to have a breakup, but it can have a very negative consequence, the consequence that this permissiveness, this tolerance, this doing nothing ends up imposing a practice that then has no way back. It can happen as if we were undermining the foundations of a building. As it does not fall, apparently the building is untouched. But the foundations are still undermined until the building falls down by itself. And that will be catastrophic. That is what can happen. The other news of this week is not that it is probably of this week, but that this week there are signs of uproar and rejection is that in the program of the WYD, the World New Day, to be held in Lisbon, appears within the chapter on sustainability, the allusion of the Agenda 2030 of the United Nations. We must remember some things about the World Youth Day. They were born under the impulse of St. John Paul II to give a testimony to the world that there were young Catholics who were enthusiastic about their faith and who loved their church in a context where the vast majority of young people had moved away from the faith. 
it served to encourage these young people who, thanks to these macro meetings, did not feel so lonely, even if they were a minority in their place of origin. They knew that there were others and that they were not as few as they might seem. The characteristic of the World Youth Day was always enthusiasm and joy, and it has been a wonderful experience during all these years. I believe that the important part of the priests have participated in one way or another in it. It was certainly important the team that was treated and really important the message that the Pope gave in the different world you days. Some of them, of course, unforgettable. It is logical. It seems to me that it is logical that at this time we want to talk about the ecological problem and to make a sustainable development. It is logical because it is one of the topics of the moment and because it is of great interest to young people. We must be very careful is that these issues do not lead to assume some concepts that are not Catholic and that in addition Pope Francis has insisted again and again that we should not assume them because in the 2030 agenda there are at least two points that could be dangerous and that the language that has been used lends itself to this manipulation. I am referring to the issue of gender equality as it is said, that it could happen, it could result that within the promotion of gender equality, gender ideology was included, and in the issue of women's equality and sexual rights and women's health rights, that is, the issue of abortion could be introduced. I believe that the Holy Father has been very clear on this issue of abortion and also on the issue of gender ideology and that precisely for this reason it is necessary to ensure that doctrines that are not Catholic do not infiltrate into the context of the world you day. First because it would harm the young people, the young Catholics, but then the world you day would end because the young Catholics would simply stop going. Little by little, many of them will stop going. It would end up dying. If World Youth Day is separated from the doctrine of the Church, it is dead. And also in the short term. I am sure that this will not happen. I repeat, the Pope is very clear on these concepts, but of course we must make an effort to avoid contamination. Now what we must not forget is that we are in Advent, and we must not forget it because we run the risk of becoming people who focus only on the negative and on the problems that exist, and that often overwhelms us. But there are also many good things, and those good things have to serve us to have a balance. Nor can we fall into angelism in which some people fall into, saying, No, God will fix it. God is the Lord Almighty. For Him, everything is possible. But if that were so, God would not have become man, and God would not have sent him. The Holy Spirit would not have come upon so many saints to move them to do things. But everything would have been done by miracles. That is certainly not the Catholic doctrine. It has never been the way of the saints, nor even the way of the mystics. And I can only want to remember St. Catherine of Siena, and how she was intensely involved in the life of the church. We cannot fall into angelism of saying, I do not want to see the negative. God will do it all. Do not complicate your life. That is not a Catholic way. But neither can we be people who look only at the bad. There is so much good in the church. And we must rejoice in them. And above all, we must never forget that Christ is the Redeemer. That Christ is is the one who leads the church, that Christ is the Lord of our lives. And therefore, in this time of Advent, to stop worrying and failing to prepare our house. Our house will be very serious to mistake. We can and should be concerned about many things in the world and in the church, but without forgetting that the Lord comes to save us and that He is Savior. Let us prepare our house. Let us prepare our souls. Let us prepare it with good confession. 
Let us prepare ourselves to welcome full of joy and in those season, the one who comes to give us salvation and hope. See you next week. God willing. We will continue to keep you informed of what is happening in the church. You can do so on our news page, www.magnifica.tv. See you next week. God willing.